and welcome to this new video for my channel, The Mental Traveler. I'm Caro Herrera and today I'm going to be reviewing a story called Sister Carrie. I shall be reviewing the novel which was written by Theodore Dreiser and published in the first year of the last century and its movie adaptation from 1952 directed by William Wyler and starring Laurence Olivier and Jennifer Jones. Before I begin though, let me just say that this will be a video with spoilers, so if you haven't read the book or watched the movie, beware. This is the story of Carrie, a young girl just fresh to the city, full of illusions and dreams about making it big in Chicago. But things don't work out like Carrie had imagined them, so her circumstances lead her to begin a relationship with a man called Charles Druett. She isn't happy about how things stand between them, but she sees no way out of her present situation. That all changes though when she meets George Hertzwood. True love quickly develops between them, but George has secrets of his own he knows he can't tell Carrie about if he wants their relationship to work. Still, George soon finds himself wanting to give up everything in order to be with Carrie, but his actions will have dire consequences that the two lovers will have to face in the future, after a time of bliss. Will they be strong enough to overcome them or not? Okay, so I give the movie a 4 out of 5 stars review because I really, really liked it. I love the acting, particularly Olivier's, and how bracing it was at depicting illicit love affairs back in an era when that wasn't such a popular movie in Hollywood. But I'm so glad that I liked it because it reminded me just how good it is for my soul to watch old Hollywood productions from time to time. And also, despite the fact that I already knew how the movie was going to end because I love spoilers, I was expecting the Carrie in the movie to be a bit more selfish, actually. And the fact that she wasn't makes the story way more poignant. In fact, what I loved about this movie was that it was just so sad. It was very realistic as well. And I believe it portrays a love story that's very grown up. I mean, the love story comes about under circumstances that I doubt Carrie would have imagined when she was a young girl growing up and dreaming of finding true love and yet this forms a connection with the reader because I could understand Carrie's position and experiences because who hasn't been disillusioned when things that you dreamed of when you were growing up don't end up happening quite that way so yeah rather than judging the characters I found myself connecting with them and I was feeling their pain and enjoying their happiness as the story progressed one thing though that I think it's funny to mention is how I became aware of the character of Carrie and what I mean is this I learned who Jennifer Jones was on the same day that I watched the movie and because she had such a unique personality as an actress meaning that she was shy in interviews or while filming love scenes as I watched the film I would sort of get the impression that that actress wasn't that comfortable shooting love scenes but then that made her portrayal of Carrie seem as if the character was shy while being in a love scene. I hope that made sense. If I hadn't learned that about Jennifer Jones, if I would have quite picked up my perception of Carrie as being a shy lover. But yes, anyways, moving on. As to the book, I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars review because I didn't like it. At least not when compared with the movie. It's a fine classic on its own, but it's just so different from the film that at some points it seemed like I was reading about a completely different story. What I mean is that while Hollywood made a movie about this tragic love affair, the novel is way too realistic and crude for my taste. For example, and here comes the spoilers, Carrie never falls in love with either of her lovers. And while I did find myself liking Hertzwood at the start of the book, when he's totally captivated by his attraction to Carrie, even though at times it seemed this was because he was having a middle-age crisis, and he believes that she's the answer to all of his problems, in the end the feelings that he has for her fade away, because once they're together, they just have way too many economical problems that they can't solve. And while I like I like my books to be realistic, except when I'm reading fantasy, and I don't mind sad endings. The book was just way too depressing. Once Carrie and Hertzward are together, we never get to see them being really happy, unlike in the movie, where they appear to be so in love that the fact that they're poor doesn't matter one bit. And like in the movie, Carrie loves Hertzward a lot, but in the book she only wants to be rich. And in the end, in the book, the fact that they're together doesn't really seem like a triumph because they were robbed from the happiness that they knew in the movie. And then there's the ending, which is totally different from the movie. So in the end, I'd say that if you're a sentimental person like me, the film is for you. But if you prefer to read about how love disappears when hunger makes an appearance, the novel is for you. I guess I mean overall that in conclusion, I find the book to be a good American classic. But it has so little to do with the movie towards its second half that I wasn't really prepared for the changes and I didn't welcome them. Finally, as a really quick side note, Carrie reminds me of Charles Chaplin's Limelight. So if you're looking for stories of a similar spirit, Limelight might just be the one for you.
Okay, so I've always had a big love for old Hollywood productions. Vivian Lee is one of my two top favorite actresses of all times. And for years, she was married to Laurence Olivier, one of the most legendary actors of all times as well. So whenever I read a biography about Lee, there comes a time when they mention that Laurence Olivier, Hollywood to film Carrie. But I gave this little attention, thinking that they meant that he had started in the movie Carrie, based on Stephen King's book. And I've never really cared for scary stories, so I was like, no, I'm not gonna watch that. One day, though, not that long ago, for some reason I ended up realizing that Laurence Olivier's Carrie was a totally different film from the movie based on Stephen King's work. And I was pleasantly surprised to learn that Olivier's movie was actually a love story. So I looked it up, I remember I thought the plot seemed promising, and I bought the ebook, thinking that since I love spoilers, I would get around to reading it after I'd watched the movie. Anyways, it took me a long while to actually go watch watch the movie and subsequently read the book but I finally did so because of this podcast that I'm completely in love with that's called You Must Remember This. It's about secret and or forgotten stories of Hollywood's first century and one day I was listening to this episode about David O. Selznick, an important film producer whom I liked because he was a mastermind behind my favorite movie of all times, Gone with the Wind, starring Vivian Lee. Anyways, in this episode I learned a lot more things about David O. Selznick, among them that he had a complicated love affair with his second wife, Jennifer Jones. And as I listened to their story, utterly fascinated and horrified at the same time by what I was learning, I discovered that Jennifer Jones was the protagonist of Carrie, and that was all it took for me to finally make up my mind to watch the movie. So I did, and by the next day I was at long last reading the novel it was based on. Anyways, for the moment I believe that this is all I have to say about Carrie, or Sister Carrie. Thank you so much for watching my review for this story. Please let me know if you enjoyed the video or not, as well as what are your own thoughts on this story, because I would love to talk about it all with you. In the description box below you can find a link to the Goodreads page for the novel, as well as a link to the IMDb page for the film. Anyways, I'm Caro Herrera, the mental traveler, and I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you're in the world. I'll be seeing you soon. Goodbye!